Dear chairs, dear colleagues, I will be talking about the use of the ozone therapy in chronic obliterating diseases of the lower extremity arteries. Uh, this problem of chronic obliterating diseases of uh, uh, the lower extremity arteries uh, is still relevant, uh, and according to academic Gadamish uh, Prokofsky, up to 19% of people uh, aged uh, over 55 years of age uh, suffer from obliterated diseases of the lower extremity arteries. Also, they are the reason behind the larger number of amputations, up to 10%. The goal of the study was uh, to improve the treatment outcomes using in ozone therapies in combination with conservative therapies in the treatment of obliterating diseases of the lower extremity artery. So this uh, study had the following criteria for inclusion, chronic ischemia third stage, according to Pokrovsky's classification. Uh, no receiving channel, so these patients uh, were not to be uh, surgically intervened because uh, it was all the question for them and they could only count on conservative therapy. Also, there was no chronic diseases in acute for patients uh, who had nicotine dependence, who were smokers, were excluded from the study. Also, at a certain stage of the treatment, no matter where, at which uh, center, uh, if the patient had an, amputa had, had an amputation, he was excluded, and diabetes mellitus patients were also excluded. And this is the Pukowski classification, showing you the third stage of patients who were patients could not walk for over 25 meters. This research included 154 patients with third stage ischemia, uh, obliterating atherosclerosis, uh, included 126 patients. Uh, the 28 patients were with obliterated endoarterite. The first group included 77 patients who were given an ozone therapy in combination with a traditional treatment. The second group, uh, traditional treatment uh, included disaggregants, also synthetic analogs of prostaglandin E. <coughs> the frequency of hospitalization was twice a year. The second group received only the traditional type of treatment. We used uh, these uh, medical medozone and Gux uh, ozone generators. Uh, uh, the ozone therapy parameters are shown in the slide. The course uh, included 10 procedures with a concentration of ozone in the solution, 0 0.74 in per liter, 5 mg per liter at the output bar uh, and um, 20 minutes was the time that it took for barbitage, bubbling, the clinical results. So, the distance uh, of uh, painless walking was uh, evaluated, uh, freezing of extremities reduction, numbness of uh, extremities and uh, an increase in the temperature of the skin was were evaluated. In the first group all the parameters were better, however uh, it was just a tendency towards it. Uh, we found no significant changes. Uh, distance of painless walking uh, improved up to 150 meters maximum. But uh, by the end, uh, or by the beginning of the next ozone therapy course, everything had gone back to normal, and it was not uh, more than 25 meters again. Also, we evaluated uh, the shoulder index before the treatment. It was 0 0.39 after in the first group where they used the ozone therapy. There was this tendency for improvement up to 0 0.47 in the second group it was 0 0.43 there was also a t it was just a tendency no significant changes were obtained 
Also, we started the microcircular relation on lock zero one device. It shows you just uh, one of the many indicators for the efficacy of microcirculation index. So here we got significant changes. The microcirculation was started uh, upon admission. Its initial original level was 0 0.8. And upon checking out, in the first group it was 1.2, in the second group where only the traditional treatment was given, it was significantly lower. Also, we got this. These are the results of the treatment. The results were studied for five years. So the number of traffic uh, ulcers or disorders in the first uh, group was significant significantly lower than in the second group. In the first group, the number of tropical disorders was 26.8, in the second 37.7. The number of app mutations in the first uh, group uh, was uh, significantly lower, accounting for 6.5%. In the second group, it was higher, accounting for 10.4%. So, <coughs> the application of the ozone therapy in a combined uh, treatment of chronic obliterating disorders of the low extremities arteries improves uh, the outcome of the treatment by influencing the microcirculation as well as allowing for reducing the number of tropical traffic disorders and number the number of amputations in these patients. Thank you very much. Thank you for your report. Questions? Claudia Nikolaevna, you had a question there, I right know. One more again. You don't have a microphone. Yes, we used two needles. <coughs> the administration of uh, an ozonized uh, physical solution was uh, took about 10 minutes in the room. Well, there was a certain concentration. There was a, a little small concentration in the solution because while you're at means it can go down to zero. You know, 20 minutes uh, is enough to for the concentration to go down to zero and we will put it in a dark bag. No, there it has nothing to do with the light. So I think it has to do with the fact that you should have, uh, you would have had a better result if you had used three needles because we have done a lot of works like that. Svetlana Palovna also defended the candidate's work there. She worked with the same similar patients and she had great outcomes. And your outcomes are worse. Maybe it's because of the low dosage of ozone that you introduce. It should be upped. Maybe you would find an opportunity to work with three needles. This takes medical staff. You don't do it on your own. It's your nurses that are in charge of that. Why not find a way? This is my personal opinion, I'm not asking any of the chemical property. There is a mistake in the slide. I guess yes, Gashia's face, uh, the physical solution is in milligrams, but uh, when you're referring to the solution, it's in grams. It's uh, 0 0.5 there, it's that's what it says. But it's not, uh, it's supposed to be milligrams. There's a mistake in the slide. Any more questions? Claudia Nikolaevna rightfully noted this, while you're tripping, no ozone will remain there because it uh, decomposes in a swift manner. Claudia Nikolaevna recommends three needles for intravenous injection. Well, what if your nurse misses the moment? Where will all this gas go? To the lungs, which would cause embolism. Don't do it. The concentration is important. How do you get concentration? Very concentration. That's another thing. So, uh, you have their guys in the chairs. And I think they know that it should be injected into the artery, which would improve the effect. And uh, maybe it has to do with the puncture complications related to puncturing arteries. You know, 
We did it uh, when the arterial diseases were real, severe. We have the opportunity to do so. We are capable of that. And the concentrations that you showed there have next to no ozone while you're dripping. The microcirculation is not there. When you're dripping a large concentration here, this is the vein uh, here. Well, while it goes up to here, no ozone is there. Some active forms of oxygen or so ozonides can remain, but no ozone as it is. Evgeny, a question. There is a differing points of view here, just like Vladimir is saying. There is a lot of different points of view, but I would like to voice mine also. You know, while you were bubbling, you were bubbling the solution at what concentration? Five milligrams per liter at the uh, downstream. Uh, how much would you get it by the time you get an infusion? It would be 1.5 if the solution is good. And, uh, it could be worse. Well, I've spent 10 years to know these measurements, and I can tell you that all of my words are based on experience. If the physical solution is good, if it's ozonized well, because not all physical solutions are ozonized well, but still, which is a sad thing, a sad fact. But if the physical solution is good, if you give 10 milligrams per liter, 10 minutes later, the concentration will add up to 25% of the alcohol concentration in a gas. If it's 10, it would equal 2.5. If it's 5, it would be 1.5. Do you get the math? Using the system, of course. It also depends on the speed of dripping. But now we're talking about the concentration in the vial itself, because uh, that's what we need to be discussing. If you're bubbling it within the vial, if you're bubbling it within the vial, five milligrams and you get 1.5. Can you argue with that? If you start arguing with that, I will sh prove the truth to you, because it would be uh, either 1.5 or 1.8 then this uh, concentration exponentially goes down. Why? The thermal con decomposition is the first factor. The second thing is that when we're operating two needles, what do we do? First we ozonate and then we deozonize uh, by the oxygen. Right or not? Yes. So these uh, two factors make up the essence of these method. There is a simple solution to this. Everyone can do it. Two options are there. First, you can create a special module to support the concentration without any electronic devices. Or, uh, without any module, you could uh, just uh, take a small bag um, that would receive the ozone-oxygen mixture and uh, you would connect it uh, there, and then ozone would get, go there, not oxygen. And if you go for eight times so their concentration that you want to get in the ozone, so it will not change. Club the Nikolai, you are not understanding. Uh, you're, yes, I'm listening to you. Okay, there are a lot of issues that would seem to be somewhat mystical, but uh, there is nothing, no mystery about them. I have to find the right approach to meteorology for you to get the right results. 1.5 milligrams works in his case, works fine, I should say. Microphone. Thank you. Any more questions? You have used it only intravenously, yes. Uh, when we have uh, traffic uh, uh, disorders, of course, we go for the local one. Uh, the best outcome uh, you get when you're treating endotritis is the administration of gas mixtures in the lumbar uh, part, in the pedal uh, 
phobia and the gluteus uh, uh, muscle and uh, in the interior syringe spaces. This is where you get the fastest outcome and it remains there for a long time. And the best uh, way to treat endotheritis and polyneuropathy from alcohol would be an ultraviolet irradiation of blood and the introduction of a gas mixture into like the petalophobia, gluteal muscle and the lumbar spine. Yes, I'm not. Uh, don't agree with the extremities. Only with the lumbar spine, because uh, uh, God forbid an infection occurs there. Uh, when when you introduce it into into a finger spaces, into patients feel a warm in their legs. Uh, it uh, the skin becomes uh, more rose. Um, the pain goes away. Any more questions? It's enough. Okay. Thank you very much for your interesting report and your complete answers.